beautiful olive trees at almost the end of uh, September 2021 and we are at the city of Ashkelon. Ashkelon? We didn't hear about it? You didn't? No, kidding. I know, I know. Most of you heard about um, uh, Jerusalem, Jaffa, Nazareth. But what about a city or village from 10,000 years ago? And as a city, and you can see the walls of it, um, is actually a huge city 4,000 years ago. Is it important? Is it important if I'll tell you that according to what we know, King Herod was born here? Is it important if I'll tell you that it's actually uh, mentioned in the Bible as well as a Philistine? Not Palestinian, Philistine city. Oh, is it important if I'll tell you that we find here, together with the city of Dan at the north of Israel, uh, we find here the oldest arch gate in the world. Is it sound important now? Yes. Then let's visit that city. The walls that you saw are Canaanite um, walls. You will see more of it. But everyone controlled the city. And guys, everyone controlled the city. Uh, because it's like a very important trade city. You can see the sea then. There's a port here. And if there is a port here, there's life here and trade. Um, it's on the highway from from uh, Egypt, which is that way, to Lebanon, Syria, Mesopotamia, Europe. Ta -da -da. Sounds more interesting, isn't it? Then in that case, Ashkelon uh, was a very important city. It wasn't an uh, Israelite city most of the time. Um, we know it as more like a um, Canaanite city, um, Philistine city, uh, and less than a Jewish city, although there were Jews here as well. And here it is. Doo -doo -doo. You can see the Canaanite ramparts. And it looks like that. We're talking about 1950 BC. Again, 1950 BC. Around 4,000 years ago. And we will visit that gate. We will actually will go through it. Which will be very interesting because I want you to think about the Canaanite people who actually did it. And here you can see part of those walls because we believe that it was quite easy to climb we are not sure that it was built to protect the city just to say um, this is part of uh, the city um, if you are entering you must know that you need to get um, a permit but what about people that couldn't get a permit and couldn't enter through the city if there were Canaanite people out of the city, not city, let's say agriculture part of uh, the Canaanite, but not the uh, city people. Here, later on, they build themselves a, a temple. In that temple, I don't know if you can see, we found 10 centimeters of a bowl with horns. It means that this is kind of the fertility um, temple. You know, it's a male. And um, are we entering to the wall, to the city, through the Canaanite gate? Yes, we will. But you must understand that everyone that uses it build their walls on top of that area. Then up there, you can see Canaanite wall. You can see, you will be able to see a crusader one, Muslims walls. Ta -da -da. Let's do that. How many times you can actually tell yourself or say that you enter through 4,000 years old gate. Mm -hmm. We are going to do that together. It's a lovely, lovely day. It's the end of September 2021 and um, 
I can show you what we find here. And um, and we're not so far away from Gaza. Doo -doo -doo. Here it is. That's what we found. We found that calf, but it's not a calf. It's a ball. Um, he was in a that kind of pottery. Now, why not a calf and a ball? A calf is a small animal. Uh, when we say the golden calf, you know, ah, uh, not so important, but that was a ball. That was something more interesting than that. The mode that you see here, and you saw better at the other, at the beginning of the video, was made by the Crusaders. That, that city was used by so many. And when they came, uh, they destroyed the old evidence and built something new instead of it. Then someone else came, destroyed that evidence and built a city on top of it. Then in that case, Ashkelon, like so many other important cities, are actually Tel. Tel, we are talking about layers of city. City on top of a city on top of a city. Then the first city was the Canaanite city. And we will enter soon through that gate. Welcome to the gate. Welcome to the most ancient arch gate. The lower part is original, but I must say that so many other parts, especially the concrete here, are not so. They've renovated exactly according to the place that used to be before. And let me show you how it actually used to be looked like. Here it is. You can see the two towers. Go ahead. All right, that's the first tower. And The second tower, which is, this is only the, the base of it. You can see that it was higher. The brakes were, were made with mud. Mud. Yeah, because that's how they knew how to build uh, walls. Yes, because it was made of mud, have to deal with it a lot. That is one of the reasons that we'll build how should you say, kind of an ugly roof to protect it. Then here it is, 1850 BC. It was 15 meters long, over two meter wide, and almost four meters high. Now if I'm talking about where we are, And later on, the Canaanite were here as well. And then the Israelite, King David, and the rest uh, controlled that area. And then the Persians, the one who uh, actually destroyed Jerusalem, um, came. And then the Hellenistic, the Greek, uh, controlled that area. And at the Roman time, King Herod was born. And um, the city became to be a very important city. Now the Byzantines, that's the same as the Romans, but the Romans uh, converted to Christianity, and now we are calling him Byzantine. He'd been, de and been destroyed by the Muslims who came to here, but then the Crusader came to here again in, 19, uh, in 1099, and then the Muslims came, and then the Ottomans, Oh, British and the Israelite. Then, here it is. You can see a little bit of the original mud blocks. And we didn't find the arch itself. In Tel Dan, we found the arch. But we knew exactly how they built it. Here it is. 
it's the only thing that's left for us to do is to complete it. Now, let's walk through it. And as you can see, we are climbing up. I must take a picture of it. I will say it again and again and again. Can you understand that we are walking through the most ancient arch gate? Oh, sorry, I almost fell. But I forgot to, to mention <laughs> the most important thing. When King Saul and Jonathan died, King David actually cried and he, and he, and he said, oh, oh, please don't say it to the girls, the ladies of Gat and um, Ashkelon, because they will dance and will be happy. Uh, King Saul and his son died in the Gilboa, the north of Israel, by the Philistines themselves. Then um, the war between King Saul and King David uh, were a lot between the Philistines and and uh, and themselves. Then the book mentioned that it was outside, but that's in Hebrew. In the, in English, I think it's uh, it's uh, described by the streets of uh, Gat and. Uh, uh, and Ashkelon, I think that they didn't, know, didn't understand what's the meaning of the word chutzot, which is in Hebrew. That's how we can read it in the book of Samuel, uh, second uh, uh, chapter one. And um, this is the chutzot. This is the outside of the gate. And in that case, you can actually imagine the rumors about the king that died um, um, by the Philistines here and was the most important king, uh, the most important enemy of the Philistines uh, of the Philistines here. Then you can imagine the people are very happy, maybe um, uh, giving candies into each other, uh, blessing each other, you know, like um, like they want. Then that story happened right here. And, uh, just outside the gate, Chutzot, I hear. Outside the gate, out of the city. Maybe here. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Remember, only people who inv were invited here could enter. The lower part is mostly original. The upper part is not so. Someone is listening to Spotify. <clears throat> then we were at the Canaanite. We saw a uh, crusader moat. We know that the upper part of the wall, let's say another 15 meters high, were built by crusaders and, and so on and so on and so on. And what we are looking at here, a beautiful mosaic floor. Of what? Next to the wall. Next to the gate. Sadly, I cannot go in. But what we believe here is that it might be a Roman villa. Beautiful, isn't it? Let me be as close as I can to it. Look how amazing is it. Then we jumped to the first, second, first century. 4,000 years ago. And then 2,000 years ago. Amazing! The problem of 
tell Ashkelon is uh, there are a few problems. The first one, uh, it's um, unknown for so many. Secondly, it's the hugest tell ever. Then, uh, it is a problem. Uh, you need a lot of money and a lot of excavations to dig here. And every place that you will dig, you will find part of the city. Let's go to the sea. To see the sea. Until we will reach that place. If you are watching that video and this is the first time that you're watching my video, then you must know that I have something like actually more than 19,000 videos about Israel and the Holy Land. Secondly, I will be more than happy if you will subscribe me then and push the bell, ring the bell and you will get the latest videos ever. Another thing, uh, at the description you will find a little bit more about uh, Ashkelon, the history of Ashkelon and ways to talk with me, to connect me. Let's say um, Instagram, professional, uh, professional Instagram and, and uh, Facebook. Hello, hello, the cliff of this beautiful place. Now, let's talk about where we are. First of all, you can see that we are very close to the sea. Secondly, Tel Aviv, it's around 40 kilometers, uh, 25 miles from here. Gaza which is another name to Palestine is something like 10 miles, not more than that, uh, 20 kilometers from here. And um, if I promise you that if they will shoot us, uh, uh, shoot a missile through us, I will take a video of it. I'm talking about the Hamas, which is a terror organization, and Jihad Islamic, another terror organization. But the second one belongs to the Iranic, which we do have a little bit problem with it. That in that case, we don't know exactly where the port were. Maybe here, maybe there, or maybe there. We are not sure. We do have our speculation, but we didn't find a lot of it. Let me climb up to the upper part of the wall, which is actually not the upper part of the wall, because the wall was another 15 meters higher than that. There's a nice view from there as well. I came to here at 9 a.m. Um, gosh, it's hot. And this is a cool day. It's around 28 degrees, 85 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but it's humid. It's not as humid as in uh, um, August, but it's humid. Tel Ako, uh, Tel Ashkelon is quite big. Then I will have to take the car from one place to another. Mm hmm, they took my place. I'm gonna go to the other one. This is the tail, and you can see that it's so green mainly because we didn't excavate a lot. And if you don't know how to, right, Ashkelon, then here it is. And don't worry, I will talk about the history of Ashkelon, but it's too long. 
uh, to read it now. Then we are on top of the wall. Actually, no, the wall were the wall was higher than us. You can see part of it, and the Canaanite Gate is right there. What you can see from here is the city of Ashkelon and behind it is the city of Ashdod, two of uh, the main targets of uh, uh, Hamas from Gaza. Another target where the electricity uh, power station and the desalination factory as well. Because nowadays we are drinking mostly the water of um, the sea. It is, this is the Canaanite Gate. Temple just beneath us. Nice, isn't it? We are walking on the wall. It's a rumbled store. Then let's say goodbye to modern Ashkelon. Let's say goodbye now to the sea. I know, I know that you want to be there. Uh, I live very close to the sea and because of it, or maybe because of it, I didn't, I didn't visit the sea a lot. Then we're going back to the car. Um, let me tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, soon I will stop the video and uh, I will continue to see some more of the evidence of Ashkelon and um, then I will add it at the end to one long video but before that you can see the squirrels which is um, when you see a squirrel you know that summer is gone and we are already in autumn so hot here. Look how beautiful it is. Then are you going uh, back with me? Because we are going back through the gate. for Villa Byzantine Roman such a beautiful you can see the decoration I mean it's such a beautiful colors small stones the one who built it knew what he's doing and the one who bought it was rich <clears throat> Thank you.
here we are. Back in the gate. Step. Use the rail handle. Let me show you the gate again. We're going to the moat now and the moat was dry. Here it is. Let me see if you remember where it was. Ah, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let me take you to the temple. The one who couldn't enter the city could use that temple. You see the wall, I can climb it. Even me. Then see you in my next video Ta -da -da. of Ashkelon. Ta -da -da. Tell Ashkelon less of cities. Bye bye. We are back at Ashkelon, Tell Ashkelon, the ancient city, and here it doesn't look so something like something special because we now. It took us only, let's say, 2,000 years, decided to renovate the basilica. When I'm talking about basilica, it sounds like um, a church structure or ancient synagogue structure. But no, basilica is actually um, Roman structure and here, for example, it's everything but religious uh, place. The word basilica is from the word basilos, king. If we are um, using basilica, it is from the same word. It is spice of the king, the herb of the king. Then in that case, here in the center of the national park are remains of a colonnade structure dating from the Roman period. I'm talking about the third uh, um, century that if you're thinking about King Herod, it's not. It's not not only because he didn't build it, because we find here it because we find a lot of uh, marble and King Herod didn't use marble. What you see here is one of the columns that we are renovating then you can understand uh, you will see soon actually uh, how it's gonna be look like. This was Ashkelon Basilica, a courtyard whose walls and floor were covered with marble and which uh, was uh, surrounded by rows of columns and chambers. The basilica was 100 meters long and that is the longest basilica that we found in Israel and I think one of the longest uh, biggest uh, basilicas in the world and 35 meters wide here was where the public activities of uh, social life performers um, oh sorry uh, of Ashkelon took place citizens met in order to do business to conduct their social life uh, performers uh, were held here um, as well as military experience and from time to time uh, religious um, uh, uh, performers or religious um, ceremonies were held here as well. Here, this is the, here you can find, and soon I will reach that place. Usually, I, usually, until a year ago, I could enter into it, but now because they are uh, rebuilt it, then sadly we cannot. It looks like a theater, but it used to be more like the government square 
uh, which is a half round. Let me show you how it's going to be look like. Sadly, there were amazing statues here, marble statues. Uh, one of them are the easiest, and uh, and I don't know where they took it from. I will make a run tour soon to see if I'll find it. All right, that that's what we're going to see. Let's say in about a year or two. Then that's why it was very important for me to be here before, because I wanted to, I wanted you to see it before and I promise to come back again when they will open it to the public. You can see the half theater around here, here it is, and the colonnade structure of the basilica. Nice isn't it? Then let me make a round tour around it and I'm looking for um, for those statues, we found a lot of marbles here, lots of marbles here that we're going to use uh, uh, as part of the um, renovation. Oh, it's so sad that I cannot go in, but it's going to be beautiful. We are looking for those statues. Oh, until then, I will talk about it. Uh, Miss Esther, that was, um, she helped one of the kings of um, England, Britain. And she decided in the 19th century to visit Israel. And mainly because she heard about uh, gold treasure here. She didn't, she didn't do it without her permission. She got permission from the local Ottomans, uh, from the Ottomans uh, who control Israel. Look how beautiful is the other one. And you can see from here even better in the Basilica. Then she uh, promised to give half of the treasure to the Ottomans and then half, another half, to the local Jaffa ruler that took care of her and of course everyone came with her. Now she was Christian, there were Muslims and to show them that she's not looking for stealing, um, I don't know, history uh, from uh, from the Holy Land and she didn't want to move it back to Israel then she, they looked at one of the scissors statue and uh, they broke it into pieces, which is so sad. Uh, some say that they believe that uh, um, gold was, was hidden there and as you can understand, it wasn't there. Now she went from here after two weeks of excavation kind of a destruction and um, she disappeared that is the beginning of the excavation in that area you can sadly you cannot smell the barbecue that area is mainly uh, used by the Israelis as a barbecue area some of them and some places they can actually sleep here at location of uh, Ashkelon we already know that it's uh, at the seashore and at the ancient time if you wanted to travel from one place to another you had to do it through the seashore then um, then Ashkelon was a very good place to stop there are more than 60 uh, water wells here. So many kinds of, see the signs say that uh, you cannot go there. Then let us see. Uh, the basilica from that side. Then water wasn't a problem here. It was quite green here especially around Ashkelon <coughs> you 
can see the other one, the little theater, the government area. And the basilica. I'm still making a round tour uh, to find those statues. I'm sure that, oh, at least I want to be sure that we'll find it. You can see the mosaic floor. <coughs> It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be beautiful. Harub Street, Harub. Harub Street, uh, trees, sorry. Oh, barbecue, if you're a veggie, it's not the place for you. And our water pool, the water well. granite columns in front of you as a child they used to be here a lot <coughs> I remember that uh, as a child that there was lots of columns and we used to jump on it uh, but I, as, a, as a child uh, I didn't understand the meaning of Ashkelon The breeze here is amazing. <laughs> I was looking for that sign that say there, no music allowed here. Because I know the Israelis. They believe that if they bought a ticket to enter, they own that place. Look at the beautiful Corinthian uh, column. And we're talking about Crusaders of Byzantine, and there is a marble evidence of it. Far, far away, you can see the walls of the city. This is the west part. The arch is at the south part, and uh, east is the sea, and I'm now looking at the north part. From here you can see the column. Beautifully, they are trying to build it, renovated it, kind of an ancient way. Sorry that the sun is in your eyes. Basilica, the Roman Basilica. Mm -hmm. The kiosk is open. Should I go there to buy myself a cup of coffee? I might. But first I'm going to the car. If you like that video, and if you understand that I actually, we were, actually, we were built a structure, a basilic uh, place, without almost seeing it, then I was more than okay. Then if you like it, subscribe my channel, and you do have some uh, information and the descriptions about how to reach me and how to ask me questions and I will be more than happy to talk about it then see you in my next video from Ashkelon bye bye
Hello, hello again from uh, ancient Ashkelon. Let me talk about a strange and funny story. In 1815, sorry, 1815, 19th century, beginning of it, um, Lady Esther Lucy Stanhope, a rich Israel. She served the Prime Minister in uh, Britain, but she said enough is enough, I need to enjoy life as well. Then she made a tour around the world. And when she reached Israel, uh, that was at the Ottoman time, she actually came to here to excavate. Well, she's not excavator. I mean, she, she doesn't know how to do that, but she got, uh, she had um, ancient script of a priest that tells us that there are few places that you can find a lot of gold in Israel and one of them was in Ashkelon. She got a permit from uh, the Sultan who asked half of the gold that she will find and she reached Akko and um, the Sultan said, I mean the ruler said there, we know that Ashkelon is full with uh, marble and good things because part of my um, it's called Hanun Umdan. Uh, part of the, 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 the um, hotel that I'm building now is made of marble from Ashkelon. Uh, she reached uh, Jaffa, she met uh, uh, Abul Nabut, uh, which is another government of, uh, of Akko, of uh, Jaffa, and he knew about Ashkelon as well because um, at the entrance to Jaffa, you can find a nice Seville rat, kind of. Um, place to drink and to purify your body before you enter to the mosque, which covered with marble that he found here in Ashkelon. After he promised, I mean, he, he after um, a nice discussion, uh, Lady Lady um, Hester uh, Lucy Stanop uh, decided to give him a little bit of the a gold mine that she will find, a uh, gold treasure that she will find here. And they came to here and started to excavate, not before they had a very important uh, uh, ceremony, they sacrificed kind of a chicken. And for two weeks she found a lot of marbles and a lot of statues. One of them was of, um, as we believe, um, uh, maybe a scissor or someone like that. It was of a man sitting on, a, on, a, on his throne. Then uh, we know about it because she left us uh, some memories and, and the doctor of her even painted it. Uh, she decided together with the um, uh, Arabs to, to destroy it, mainly because the Arabs believe that the gold uh, is hidden there. And um, she wanted to show the local people that she's not like the other uh, British trying to steal their treasure and move it to the British Museum. She didn't find the gold. She smashed the statue, but she was the first one who excavated in Israel in a way, although it wasn't kind of a legal uh, thing and not professional thing. Then um, we found here three marble statues Two of um, Nika of Victoria, uh, the god of uh, victory. Uh, one of them with, um, uh, she's standing on Hercules, and the other one is an Egyptian um, statue, made of marble, of course, of Isis. And uh, Horus, her son, is next to her. Uh, how it can be? The Romans, when they reach different places in the world, they adopted uh, their idols. The idea is almost the same. Then instead of um, of Horus, which is the living god, um, living king, they changed it to Hippocrates, the god of medicine. But it, the, the idea is the same. Then um, let's go to see it. And I hope that they won't shout at me because I'm going to cross um, I'm going into the area of, of it then because uh, um, you won't be able to see it in a different way then everything that you see here as I believe marble and granite I can see granite as well and 
the first tattoo that we will see is of Nika but standing on Hercules it actually goes like that you see Hercules as a small guy naked the earth on his head and she is standing on it I mean the study is amazing uh, you can see the wings of Nika, the god of victory, and the head been destroyed, as we believe, by the Muslims. They didn't understand or they didn't accept the idea of it. It's against the law in um, <clears throat> in uh, Islam. Another Nika, you can understand that it was standing, and it will be um, because they are renovating the basilica. It's going to be part of it. You can see Nika as well. Look how beautiful the garment, the dress is. Again, her head is not here, but on top of it, you could see the walls of the city. You can see the wings of Tiha, and she is actually holding, and this is a symbol for, for uh, um, um, victory, palm branch, if you are Christian. Remember, Hosanna, 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 the same idea. And the third one, is right here. Remember, we talked about Isis. They changed it later on to Tiha, the goddess of the city. You can see that she is holding a kind of a crown um, with the walls of the city, as I believe, and next to here is Horus. That later on it became to be Hippocrates, god of medicine. Beautiful, isn't it? Let me see if you can see. I think here we can see it better. Now we can see it better. And we will do that again with the other two. Hercules. The Earth. And Nika. I cannot see what you see now because it's uh, the sun is too strong. But I believe that you can see it. And before I go, I will go to a shade place to see it as well. If not, I will take a video of it again. You can see the wings of her, a dress, beautiful dress, crown, and um, branch. Um, There's another part of a state here, but um, I don't know what it is. It's difficult to understand that. Oops. Yeah. Almost fell. It's like a punishment. I wasn't supposed to cross that line. But for you, I will do so many things. That if you like that video, and you want to see more of... Uh, of Israel, then you know must know a few things. First of all, uh, later on I will add all those videos of Ashkelon into one. Then you will be able to see it uh, part by part, and then all together as one long video. Secondly, I do have more than 19,000 videos of Israel. Then if it's your first video of uh, me and you want to see more, then don't forget to subscribe my channel and push the button, ring the bell and uh, you will be able to see the latest videos. If you want to talk to me, I mean, to ask me questions, then uh, the description you will fill, you will find my uh, professional uh, Instagram and Facebook channel, and via uh, YouTube, you can do that too. And if you want to support me, because I'm not working for more than one and a half year, um, and you cannot reach Israel yet. 
um, then you can do that through the link of buy me a coffee which is at the description of that video or you can ask me and I will send you the link it actually helps me to travel around Israel and to upload those videos then thank you very much see you in my next video bye bye we're still at the ancient tell of uh, Ashkelon you can see here part of the in the southern walls of the city, way to Gaza, one of the, the oldest cities as well. Today it's part of the Palestinians. And you can see the Mediterranean Sea. It's difficult to know where the harbor, the port of uh, uh, Ashkelon was, but we know that it was very important because they imported or export here a lot of onions. Yeah, onions to Europe and um, wine, the wine of Ashkelon was very important. The wine of Ashkelon was important until the Muslims came to the wood at the 7th century and then, you know, alcohol and uh, Muslims usually not going together. Another important thing is that the, uh, when they built the Aswan um, Then the sand stopped from coming to here and then slowly slowly that cliff is collapsed. As you can see the cool car sands down here are not so uh, so solid and if there is a port, it might be here. Maybe those columns that they use as a secondary use used to tie those small boats that enter to here. As you know, that port was not a very deep one then as today. You can see that a lot of them are staying outside and then small boats are reaching that area to give you... Um, oh, look at that. I don't know if you can see... Oh, here it is. Oh, no, I want to do that once in my lifetime. Then are you ready to reach for the sea? Not easy, but we will do that. See that the sea reach, reach the, the, the cliff, which is not good for us. Because slowly, slowly, that city be, will be destroyed. Um, about uh, walls, there were no walls at the time of Canaanite here. Um, in that time, the side of the sea, because they were dependent on the cliff. But the wall that you see there, for example is oh yeah it's from the crusader time the muslim time as well it's a meditation for me such a beautiful place we are heading that is to ashkelon 150,000 habitats and then ashdod and tel aviv uh, this is the north part that is the south part. From here we will reach um, Gaza, which is, if I believe, was a better port than than uh, Ashkelon. And the next one, there were so many on the way, but the next best port was of uh, uh, Jaffa, Tel Aviv of today. Let's walk a little bit through here. Ah, the smell of the sea is amazing. We're trying to stop from the cliff to fall, but without any success, I must say.
that is it the port of uh, Ascalon or not? We don't know. Maybe. You can see more of the walls. Can you see the lizard there? Difficult to see it because of the sun and the camouflage. Ah, there it is. We are not really far away from Gaza Strip And as I told you before, if they will start to shoot us, because they can They cannot deal with terrorists Then I will take a video of it But look at that Look at the crown. Amazing, isn't it? There might be the port of um, of Ashkelon. Maybe not. If you like that video and you want to see more of Israel, then uh, they have more than 19,000 videos. Uh, a lot of them are beautiful. Then subscribe my channel, push the, uh, the, oh, push the bell there and you will be able to get um, the latest videos. I'm trying to upload a video a day. Uh, there's no tourists now then and it's not a problem for me, although it's not uh, cheap to travel in Israel and I'm not working for one and a half year for that there's a wonderful link in the description of that video of uh, buy me a coffee and I will be more than happy if you will uh, support me a little bit then I will be able to continue um, uh, with those videos to Ashkelon I had to rent a car beautiful port of Ashkelon thank you very much if you would want to ask me some questions don't hesitate bye bye It's almost the end of September 2021, no tourists yet, only Israelis are here in Ashkelon. Um, we talked about the Romans and the Byzantines and the Persian and the Canaanite people and the Philistines that were here, so many. Um, the only evidence for a church in that place is here, although um, I'm sure that there are more uh, churches in that area but we didn't excavate it yet. Uh, the um, uh, tell, the ancient uh, uh, place of um, Ashkelon is huge. It's actually really huge. It's the biggest tell in Israel. And it takes time and money to excavate. Uh, slowly, slowly we're doing it. But oh, we're talking about evidence from the past. 
This looks like a handle of a vase. If we put it back, we are not supposed to take evidence from the past. From here there are so many. Fig tree, if we're talking about um, the Bible and churches in Jericho, Jesus stopped next. Uh, he stopped next to a fig, uh, fig tree, a uh, sycamore tree, when he saw Zacchaeus. What you can see here is two things. The first one, the lower one with the columns, it's the church. The, the church is uh, from the 5th century. It's called the St. Mary Viris, Vidia, Virdis, sorry, St. Mary Virdis Church. The only solution for Virdis in Latin is green. Um, but you can see how beautiful it, it was. Uh, then he constructed it uh, during the Byzantine period in the 5th uh, century and uh, you can still see uh, see part of it sadly we cannot go in the church was still in use during part of the early Muslim period I'm talking about uh, 7 until the 11th century but it was destroyed by a crowd of angry Muslims and Jews at uh, 938 uh, AD. The Crusaders, when they conquered it from the Muslims, used that church as well. Sadly, I cannot go into the church, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna climb up to there and uh, we will be able to see a little bit more of it. Oh yeah. Not easy with those horns and my short trousers. I know that we found frescoes. Ouch! Sorry, mosaic on the wall. Gosh, it hurts a lot. Uh, of four saints holding uh, kind of books. Uh, we don't know who, were, who are those four saints, but we can actually think about the four Gospels. You can see the apse facing to the east. Above it, you can see the walls from the Crusader time. It's not a big one. But it's the only one that we found here. Granite columns. Nice, isn't it? Nice. The only question is, how should I go back? It hurts. You can see the sea. You can see how beautiful it is. Um, although it's only a short video, I will add it later on to a long video that I made today. I made so many uh, videos, I don't know, so many, at least six uh, different videos. And I will add it into one as well that you will know more about the story of Ashkelon. Now you will hear me cry again. It's like a tone of horn on my legs, not on my head. Ouch, I know what will happen to me now. Are you ready? Three, two, one, I'm poor. It's ouch! But I did it. And you know what? 
Let's climb the Crusader wall. Another remains remains from the Christian history. Are you okay with it? The um, walls were structured on top of the Canaanite wall, on top of the Canaanite wall there, but everyone used the same walls. I mean, they just built it uh, or renewed it, renovated it. You can see part of the wall here as well. It's kind of a, an option to climb on it. And if we're talking about history, remember we saw the gate and then the temple outside the gate and Byzantine, Muslim and Crusader. This is the time of um, Santa Maria Virdes Church. Now, I didn't find any meaning for the word Virdes. Uh, if, you, if you know something that I don't know, I will be more than happy to know it and then I will add it. Let's climb up. I must say that it's hot, but not so hot. Um, I'm happy. The wall path. Let's climb it. And I want to see if we can see something of the church from upstairs. You can see here uh, another column that was used like a secondary use uh, for the wall, for the Crusader wall. The Crusader had to build walls quickly because they were surrounded with so many uh, Muslims enemies. See Ashkelon, part of it. Look at the walls. Oh, I remember that as a child, I had a friend who lived there. I used to sleep in his house uh, in summertime and the uh, school vacation. And we used to go all the way up to the sea of Ashkelon. We went through the uh, ancient city, but as a child, I didn't mind about it. Crusader walls, and there's a little bit part of it, even there, but we are heading to the uh, Christian church to see if we can see something from above. of Santa Maria with this church from the 5th century from the Crusader time. Look at the sea. Look how beautiful it is. That is, we are like 20, uh, 25 kilometers from Gaza Strip. This is south. The other side is Tel Aviv. part of it. The church is supposed to be there somewhere. Here it is. Oh, oh there's a wind. I'm sure that you can hear it. Should I do that? Oh, Johnny Walker. Someone got drunk here. I'm up on top of the apse of the church. If it's safe to do that, I'm not so sure. No, I'm not going to the, that cliff. 
amazing, isn't it? To be drunk next to a church? How dare you? Now, this is a question. It looks like a round. Is it a round tower or is it part of the Crusader Church? Can be that, it can be that. Because all over, you can see the wall, but here, it looks like they have a round, half round, um, <clears throat> shape. I don't know what to say. It's an option that that wall was part of the church. <clears throat> but again, if you know something that I don't know, you know what to do. That the church, um, here, this is southeast. If you like that video, let's climb up. Let's see what we can see from here. Then, subscribe my channel. It looks like an apse. Oh, look at the squirrel. It looks like an apse, but it looks like a tower. But I didn't see any tower like that. Maybe there are. Until now. Don't know, really don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You can answer me yeah, if you feel that I'm talking nonsense, that it's okay. But if you feel just like me, that that might be part of the Crusader apps. Did it done? Tell me that. If you like my videos, I do have a lot of videos of Israel, then subscribe my channel. And at the description, you'll find a little bit more of the, about the church, about the history of, uh, of uh, Ashkelon, the biggest tell ever in Israel. Then I'm going back to the car. It's not hot, but it's definitely not cold. And uh, I'm going to the manager here to ask him what's happened with the uh, amazing statues from the Roman time of uh, of um, Her Hercules and the uh, Victory Victoria. I want to know. If they're hiding it now, mainly because they are renovating the um, basilic, the basilica, or I can find it in a different place. Then see you in my next video. Subscribe my channel, push the button or the ring, uh, and ring the bell, and you will get the latest videos of mine. See you. Bye bye. It's the night camping area of Tel Ashkelon, ancient Ashkelon. It's, I think, the fourth or the third video of mine. Uh, let's talk about things that difficult to see evidence, archaeological evidence, but we know that they were here. Uh, let's start with that. When the Muslims destroyed the Crusader city, for the second time, around 1265, they decided to keep the enemy away from here. Then after they destroyed the city, they built a lot of kind of tombs of holy people. And the idea is that people will visit them. And by that, they will see from the sea if the enemy, the crusaders, are on the way to here. They did it not only here, they did it in so many places um, in, uh, in Israel, all over the coast of Israel. And um, 
that about them. Let's talk a little bit about the Philistines. We don't know a lot about the Philistines. We know that the Egyptians started to mention them at the 13th century BC as people that came from far away, the gentles of the sea, the sea people, uh, and they started to be part of their soldiers. Slowly, slowly, more of them came and it started to be a little bit problem, a problematic thing for the Egyptian. Too many people that are not Egyptian are not good for us, and especially when they are, we are talking about warriors. And at the 12th century BC, something happened uh, in Europe. Destruction. The 11th century as well, and slowly, slowly, not slow, slowly, a lot of people decided to reach that area. They left Europe, Crete, Rhodes, and they came to here. The Bible mentioned them as the people from Kaftor. We believe that Kaftor is Crete, but um, they checked the bones of them and they discovered that they are more than Greece and Crete of today. In that case, they came with their families and they had a started to be a huge problem for those uh, uh, Egyptian and the Egyptian decided to kick them out. They let them use uh, the area of Gaza Strip of today and actually all over the seashore of Israel too. Uh, you can find Philistines at uh, Jaffa. Uh, sorry, Tel Aviv of today. Uh, there's a village there, beautiful one. Now it's part of a museum, Musa Museum. And you can find Philistines in Bechan, uh, north of Israel. But they were mostly near the sea. At the same time, the Israelites were the people of the mountains. And that's why they had battles between each one. Who owns that place? We own that place, but we want to be in the mountains as well. Or people of the mountain wanted to be here as well. Then in so many, there were so many problems between the Jews and the Israelites and the um, Philistines and the Bible. Um, Goliath story, for example. Um, the Philistines, although they came at pottery, Lots of them. You can find here so many, so many. Then the um, Philistines, when they came to here, they met a Canaanite. They became part of them. It was kind of a mixture between Canaanite and Philistines people. And not, let's not make the mistakes between Philistines and Palestinians. Palestinians is a totally different story. The Philistines are European who came to here, they came. <laughs> There were too many, the Egyptians didn't like them, then they settled down here. And because the Canaanites and them had the same idea, the sea people, and Philistine is only one of the names of it, there are so many names of the Philistines that the Egyptian mentioned, the Danino, for example. Then they started to get their own, the Canaanite tradition, they used the Canaanite gods, although we found some Philistines go too. And until 2016, we didn't find any evidence of the existence of the Philistines here. A little bit of pottery, but not more than that. Uh, they had a wonderful pottery. It's a kind of mixture between uh, Canaanite and European, Greek. Um, until 2016, somewhere here, actually outside the walls, we found a cemetery of uh, uh, around 200 Philistines uh, bodies. It was, they excavated here slowly and quietly, mainly because the ultra orthodox Jews here are not good with. Um, dealing with bodies, dead bodies. 
uh, dealing with um, and with bonds. They, as I believe, even if we're not talking about Jews, they wanted, they were asked to bury them immediately. Then we checked them. The men and the women were buried with a face to the sea. Mainly, maybe, only maybe, it's to the face to their land, homeland. And um, most of them were naked. Some of them, we found some pottery next to their bodies. Mainly uh, kind of uh, um, religious ceremony about the afterlife or something like that. Women, we found a little bit of jewelry on them as well. And that's about the Philistines, the people of the sea. And we know that they actually helped the Egyptian and then the uh, Egyptian didn't like it anymore. Then they sat here next to the sea together with the Canaanite people. And if you're talking about the people of the Canaanite, the, the Persian, when the Persian came and destroyed the first Jewish temple in Jerusalem, they actually been here too. But the one who, uh, they controlled that area, the one who've been here, there were the Phoenicians, which is another name for the Canaanite people. And um, in their time, we found somewhere here, another cemetery. But this time of hundreds of dogs. Da -da -da. I think it's the only evidence of the ancient time of a cemetery that dedicated to dogs. Da -da -da. Amazing, isn't it? Biblical time, um, Ashkenaz wasn't part of uh, the Bible, but when King David, uh, King David heard that King Saul and his son, his best friend Jonathan, Jonathan, died, he said, don't, don't, don't tell the secret to the people of Gat and Ashkelon. Ashkelon was one of the fa uh, fifth biggest Palestinian cities in that area. Because they say they will dance in front of the gate of the city. They will be so happy. And when you're talking about the gate, remember that we saw the gate? I forgot, I think, to mention that important story. Then I'll go back to the video of the gate or to the beginning of uh, that video because I will add it into one. And uh, go to book Samuel, Samuel second, and, uh, and read about the sorrow of King David. Don't, don't tell him, don't tell him. The Philistines, not to Gat, not to Ashkelon. They will be so happy, they will dance in front of the streets. But in the streets, in Hebrew, it's at the outside of the gate. And we've been there. We saw it. Remember, we saw the most ancient arch gate ever. Ah, oh, what can I tell you? I love this story. If you want another one, let's talk about it. Um, in the second video, I took a video of the um, the basilica, basilic of uh, uh, the city, and next to it you could find the Roman bath. I'm trying to deal with it. I know the children are not watching my videos. All right, then. Uh, next to the... Next to the... Um, uh, Roman bath. There was the gymnasium. That's where... It's like the gym of today. But at that time they did it without clothes. Naked. And then, next to it, we found an inscription that say. Come in, we are waiting for you. We are talking about of uh, some ladies who are selling their bodies. Let's do that in a, a nice way. Next to that area, we found um, a sewage canal. 
And in the Suez Canal, be ready for a horrible thing to hear. Please, if there are some children, they, I'm not sure that they need to hear it. Look how beautiful it is. Oh, the breeze. Oh, the breeze. Done. We found bodies of born children. I'll just let's say they were born yesterday, two days for, um, they live for two days, one day, few hours. Most of them were male. Now, usually at that age in time, they used to kill the little female because it costs a lot of money and they, they cannot fight. We need men. But here we found lots of bodies of girls. We believe that, sorry, of boys. We believe that it's happened because um, the girls were kept alive because they were the next generation of uh, hookers. Who cares about it? I do. It's that story, isn't it? But this is not the only story. Although uh, Ashkelon wasn't a Jewish place, there were Jews here, and the Mishnah and the Talmud actually mentioned a strange, strange uh, story. It's about uh, can we kill people or not? I mean, the, the, the government and uh, and then they would say, no, we can do that. If we can do that, we cannot do that more than one person a day or something like that. And Shimon ben Shatach, which is a very important rabbi, uh, the Mishnah say that uh, he killed 80 witches in one time, in one day in Ashkelon. Now, first of all, Ashkelon wasn't a, a Jewish place. Uh, witches? We know that there were fortune tellers, remember King Saul, which was against them, but he used one of them. Then in Demera, the story tells us, and I don't know if it was true or a story or not, uh, that there were in one cave 80 witches, female. He brought with him 80 vases, huge vases. In it, there were 80 handsome guys, that's what they say, that got new clothes. And he entered to that cave, and look at the view of the sea. That is, I hope that you can hear me, if not, I will leave that place. That might be the port of, of uh, Ashkelon because we didn't find it, but it's such a beautiful place. Then, let's go away because it's a little bit noisy that we are looking for a cave. We don't know where the cave is. Well, I'm not sure that the story is a true story, but maybe it is. Um, then he entered the cave and said, I'm one of you, but I want you. To, uh, let's make a competition. You will tell me what you can do, and I will then I will tell you what I can do, and then we will see who will win. One of the ladies said, um, I can prepare bread. And then, in less than a minute, she did it. The other one said that, and that, and that, and that. Nothing special, I must say. And then he said, I can, in two claps, can arrange that you will have 80 handsome guys for yourself. And he collapsed twice, and from those vessels went out those 80 handsome guys that dressed themselves with beautiful clothes, and he told them to hold the ladies above the ground, because as you know, if it's on the ground, they have the power of witches, the energy. But if they will be above it, they won't. And they kept it in there and killed those 80 women in one day. True or not, 
I don't know. But if it's in the Mishnah, which is the oral books of the Jews, who am I to say no? So many stories that in that case, although the view is, is, is nice, but not amazing because we didn't excavate in that place. If we will excavate here, we will find an amazing place. For example, in Afrida, which is one of the neighbor, neighbor uh, very close to here, just uh, behind that um, uh, uh, ancient city, when they excavate, they found hundreds of uh, burial sites, sarcophagus, huge and beautiful. Some of them are in the museum, but because of it's kind of a holiday in Shabbat, you cannot go there. Um, but that was outside the wall, and this is another cemetery that we can actually talk about, the Roman Rich Cemetery. Then if you like that video, subscribe my channel, and then um, in the description, you will find some uh, history, um, I mean, the story of Ashkelon and uh, the ways to connect me, to talk with me, to ask me questions about the tour and so many other tours of Israel. Um, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to meet you. And from right now, if you are not a part of my family, you are now part of my family. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.